Stan Jibalisco here. I would like to continue our discussion of the bridge rectifier circuit and how it works. Uh, in the first video in this uh, series entitled Bridge Rectifier, um, by the way, the name of the playlist in which all of these videos appear is Beginner's Schematics. The first and last words in the title of the book, Beginner's Guide to Reading Schematics. The playlist on my YouTube website is entitled Beginner's Schematics, and it's based on this book, the third edition, edited by me, published in October of 2013 by McGraw-Hill. It has a spiral binding, heavy stock paper. I'm talking about the paper version now for a reason. I strongly recommend this paper version over the electronic version for a variety of reasons, but mainly it's workbench friendly. It has that spiral binding that lets it lay flat and all that good stuff. But getting back to the bridge rectifier circuit, if you watched the previous video in this uh, playlist, you'll have watched a discussion of how we get the outputs pulsating DC from a bridge rectifier with four diodes. And then I concluded by uh, mentioning that if the diodes could light up as they conduct, that, and you could slow down the cycle from 60 hertz way down to, you know, uh, 1 hertz or something, and then watch the cycling of the lighted diodes as the, they do the work, it would be a very entertaining little animation, which I'd like to do someday, maybe. But rather than talking about how we get this pulsating DC voltage at the output, let's start at the input to this bridge rectifier configuration. This is the secondary of the input transformer to a power supply. You'll find the entire diagram of the power supply uh, that's the basis for this video, the entire diagram on page 69, figure 4-13, bridge rectifier, LC filter, voltage regulation. But I'm just talking here about the way a bridge rectifier works. First of all, let's consider what happens when electrons flow from top to bottom through this secondary winding. Now, during half of the cycle, they're going to flow from top to bottom during the other half of the cycle, they're going to flow from the bottom to the top. But when they flow from the top to the bottom, we're going to get electrons feeding in to this point right here. They're going to try to go through this diode, but they're not going to be able to do it. Because, remember, in a rectifier diode that's properly operating, electrons can only flow against the arrow like in the directions of these red arrows. In fact, all four of these little red arrows indicate the direction that electrons can flow through each of these diodes. But we are going to get electrons flowing through this diode against the arrow and out of the negative terminal, which then goes to the filtering and voltage regulation circuits. Similarly, we're going to get electrons flowing in from the plus like this. So the electrons coming in down here are going to try to flow through this diode, but they're not going to be able to do it. They're going to be able to flow through this one. Electrons that come through here, contrary-wise, are going to be able to flow through this diode and up and back around like this. So electrons are going to flow in here through this diode, down through the coil, around through this diode, and out. So during half of the cycle, these two diodes are going to be doing work. This one won't be. Electrons will not be flowing this way through this diode during that part of the cycle because this is already filled up with electrons down here. So during the half of the cycle when the current, the electron current is flowing down 
We're going to get these two diodes doing work and these two diodes getting a rest. Now let's see what happens during the opposite part of the cycle when electrons are flowing up. They're going to be fed into here. They're going to try to go through this diode, but they're not going to be able to do it. They are going to be able to go through this one and again come out of the negative terminal. The positive terminal electrons are going to go in like this. They're going to flow through this diode, then up and around. Electrons could flow through this diode except for the fact that this is already saturated with electrons up here, so there's nothing to feed it. Uh, it, may, it may conduct in theory if it could, but there's no reason for it to conduct. It would be like trying to make water flow uphill. It's not going to happen. So during the part of the cycle when electrons are flowing up like this, these two diodes will be taking the work. These two will be getting a rest. So if we could light them up when they're doing work and make them dark when they're not, we would get lighting up, lighting up, lighting up, lighting up, alternating, and there would be one reversal every one one hundred and twentieth of a second, or two complete reversals every second, which would form one complete wave cycle. So that is how this kind of a rectifier works. Now these diodes should never conduct in the direction where electrons would flow with the arrow. In order to ensure that they don't, you have to make certain, number one, that these diodes are rated to handle the current that they're going to be called upon to handle when they do conduct. That's the maximum current rating. If you don't have a high enough maximum current rating, the diodes are probably going to burn out, and then they're not going to work. They're either going to conduct both ways or not conduct either way. Anyway, what's going to happen in that case with a properly designed power supply is that it's going to have a fuse in the prime area of the transformer that will blow out so that it will protect that expensive transformer from damage in the event of a short circuit here. The diodes are cheap. The transformer is not cheap, especially in a high-quality power supply. So that's what we're going to have. The other thing that you need to consider with a diode like this, any kind of a rectifier diode, is the PIV, peak inverse voltage, also known as PRV, peak reverse voltage. You have to make sure that these diodes are rated to handle the maximum peak voltage going across them in the direction that they can't conduct. And in a power supply, depending on what kind of a filter it has, depending on its configurations, the peak inverse voltage rating can be upwards of four times the actual output that you're trying to get from this supply. And that, uh, in fact, then, or four times the peak output of, or the RMS output of the transformer secondary. So when it comes to current ratings and peak inverse voltage ratings for rectifier diodes, your best bet is to practice what I like to call over-engineering. In other words, build this thing to military specifications and then some. Then you'll never have to worry about it burning out spontaneously on you. But you do need to take other precautions, of course, with any power supply. I mean, don't short the output directly and expect it to keep working. Don't subject it to extreme transients and current surges at the input if you want it to keep working. But that's the other take on how a bridge rectifier configuration produces pulsating direct current from alternating current. And remember, the frequency of the ripple at the output is twice 
the AC frequency at the input. In the United States, it's 120 volts at 60 hertz usually. In some other countries, it may be a different voltage at 50 hertz, and then you'd get 100 hertz out at the ripple frequency. Stan Gibalisco from the Black Hills of Dakota Territory, United States of America. Until next time, so long.